we're just going to read from the end of verse 16. <clears throat> you got it? Say amen. amen. You know, God is good. God is good. Matthew chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee. John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican. James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lebaeus, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses. No, that's not women's purses, okay. I don't think Peter was a weirdo. Nor strip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who, is, who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into an house, salute it. If the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it not be worthy, let your peace return to you. Whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And then in verse 16 he said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Amen. I want to teach just for a little while on this subject, the art of soul winning. The art of soul winning. Amen. Let's just ask the Lord to help us right now. God, we thank you for your word. Your word's already anointed. Lord, I just need your help right now, God. I need your anointing. Lord, I need your touch right now, God. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Proverbs 11.30 said, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. And the scripture that I read and you're hearing tonight in Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus called his 12 disciples to him, there were two things that Jesus did before he sent them out. We're only going, we're going to break this down. This is going to be a several week study, so it's not going to just all end in one night, okay? Or several service study anyway. Notice the two things that Jesus did before he sent them out. Uh, read it again. Verse, verse 10. Uh, 1 of chapter 10 when he called unto him his 12 disciples number 1 he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and then number 2 he gave them power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease <laughs> so Jesus just gave that to the apostles it doesn't apply nowadays Right? No. Come on. I, I'm sorry, church. We are not of the denominational ilk. Come on. Hallelujah. We don't belong to the world and their, their little uh, following after Constantine and after all these guys. We don't belong on that stuff. Amen. God brought us out. We are part of the original church. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. There's not 49 different churches. There's only one church. Amen. There's only one group that's called by His name. Amen. 
And those are the ones that have submitted to him and been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. That is the church. Amen. Right. Amen. There's lots of religions out there, but guess what? Jesus hates religion. <laughs> I can prove that. Amen. I've proved it time and again, but I can prove it again. You don't believe me. Amen. He took a took a whip. <laughs> he made him a whip. He didn't have a whip, so he made one. And he run money changers and he run the religious folks out of the temple because he said, This is not uh, a den of y'all made my, my house a den of thieves. This is a house of prayer. Hallelujah. But you've made it a den of thieves. Amen. God hates religion because religion is a man made idea. Amen. That will carry you only so far, but it will not get you off the ground when the rapture takes place. Right. Hallelujah. God doesn't need religion. He needs somebody to get in here and get into salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, so what does this tell us? He gave the apostles two different things. One, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. And two, he gave them power over all manner of sickness and disease. Now, so what about the church? What about those that have been filled with the Holy Ghost? Do we have any authority? Do we have any power? Well, duh, Acts 1 and 8, any, any Holy Ghost filled saint of God needs to know this scripture. If they don't already know it. You shall receive power. What? Power. 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 <laughs> Woo! When do you get it? You, you get it, just get it. You just go up and shake the preacher's hand. Come on, shake my hand. Did you get any power just him? You didn't feel a thing. Amen. Uh, he's a wimp. He's weak. He didn't feel nothing. Amen. You know why he didn't feel anything? Because that doesn't transfer power. Hallelujah. You, the transfer of power comes from the power source. Yes, sir. Amen. And the Bible tells me I don't receive power until I have received the Spirit of God, the power source. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. So all the churches that are in the world today, all the religions that are in the world today who teach against the Holy Ghost or who don't believe in the Holy Ghost or who try to just teach you some kind of a language where it sounds like you got the Holy Ghost, Amen. All those churches are false doctrine, and all those churches right there are the ones that have no power. Hallelujah. Now, I know there's those that, you know, you know, the TV preachers and all this stuff, and, 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 and I'm not calling them names, you know, I, you know just, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, you know, they <laughs> fire on you. Show me in the scripture where it says anything about that. That's it right. said you will receive Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. But it comes when the Holy Ghost comes in. Hallelujah. Amen. The fire comes with the Holy Ghost itself. Amen. I, I, I asked a young lady one night about that situation. I asked her about that particular preacher and, 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 and what was going on there because she was a really close follower of him. But she started coming to our church. And so I said... So, so what about this guy? She said, oh, he prays in Jesus' name. He, he lays hands on the sick in Jesus' name. And, and, and they fall out and they're healed and all that kind of stuff. And, of course, I got to look at it a little further and ain't a bunch of them didn't get healed. Amen. They got up and claimed they were healed, but they weren't healed. And, and then I found out later on that some of the people that were coming in wheelchair weren't even sick. Hallelujah. Amen. You, that's deception. But can I tell you there is a real deal? Hallelujah. Yes. Can I tell you there's a real God who really answers real prayer? Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, my, my, my. Look what he said. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost yes. has come upon you. Yes. Oh, you don't receive it before. You don't receive it shaking a preacher's hand. You, don't, you can't even sign a church roll and get it. Hallelujah. Can I tell you it only comes one way And that's through the power Of the Holy Ghost That's through the anointing That God will give you when he fills you With the spirit Now one concern this preacher's got Is how I have seen the church Drifting away From that Amen 
when we pastored in Wells, it was nothing on a Thursday night. We had Thursday night service, and it was nothing on a Thursday night for somebody to get healed of cancer right here in the service. Amen. Nothing. We, we, we had miracle signs and wonders in just about every single service. Amen. But can I tell you the secret to it is, you know, we've got to get back to prayer and fasting. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, he, he gave the disciples the ability to go out and to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. But he said, first of all, I'm going to give you power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Now, we're talking tonight about winning souls, okay? He didn't win souls as wise. We know that. All right. So after we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive power. But look what Jesus said in, in Luke 10, 18 through 20. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. That's why that dude's got a flat head. Amen. I know he ain't got much of a brain in it. Hello. Amen. Behold, I give unto you power. Now this is Jesus talking. He said, I watched that Yahoo fall. <laughs> Woo. You know what? He was such a wimp that Jesus himself didn't even have to kick him out. The angels did it for him. We got to throw that Yahoo down. And they threw him down and he saw him. He said, I, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But then he turns around and said, now I'm going to give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Oh, Lord, boy, y'all sitting down. Y'all being quiet on me tonight. That's okay. You know what? I, I, I'm going to preach this in because I understand that with that power, you have an authority in you. Hallelujah. Uh, you know what grabs this preacher most in more than anything in the world is to see some Christian, amen, that's Holy Ghost filled that I know has got power and know they've got authority and they're just oh, poor, poor, pitiful me. Come on, get up, get real, get right and say, hey, you know what? I don't care how bad the devil swings at me. I've got something I'm going to give him to. Amen. He wants to swing at me. He better be ready to receive it because it's going to come back a whole lot harder than he throws it at me. Amen. Can I tell somebody that God has given us a power, amen, from on high, over all the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Don't let him deceive you. Come on. Come on. You know what the Bible tells me, Sister Williams, that when we get up there and we look at him, we're going to say, and this is paraphrasing, so this is the man this is the guy that's giving me so much trouble. That's it? This is it? Are you kidding me? Come on. I always thought he was 40 foot tall and 30 foot wide. My Lord, he was always up in my business. And that's all there is to him? Come on. Can I tell you, the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. That ought to tell you he's full of hot air. Hello? Amen. Right. Amen. He ain't got nothing. Can I tell you, the Bible said he is a liar. He was a liar from the beginning. He's still a liar. Amen. I don't know how hell ever gets anything done. They're all liars. They all lie to each other all the time. Well, did you go get that old boy? No, yeah, I sure did. Liar, you didn't do it. No way. He rebuked you in Jesus' name. You ain't messed with him. You're afraid of him. Amen. Now, let me tell you what he said. And nothing by any means your hearts, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Yes. Can I tell somebody here tonight, amen, you have a power and authority in the Holy Ghost. You Come on, hear me. The, the very first thing that needs to happen if we're going to win this city is there needs to be some folks that just square their shoulders back and tell the devil, I'm tired of you being up in my business. I'm fixing to go to praying. I'm fixing to go to fasting like you ain't never seen. And when we get done, you're going to be run out of town on the rail. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. My, my. You know what? I always send them to Dallas in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ain't enough crazy drivers over there already. Now, 
So we receive power over unclean spirits. We're going to talk about this just for a little bit. Kind of gets you hyped up here, but I want you to understand. You're not some wimp. You're not some weak, lily livered, limp wristed. You know, you're a child of God. I, I believe it's in Galatians 6 where he said that we're to take on the whole armor. Woo! Hallelujah. Uh, wherewith you may resist. You're going to resist. Amen. The Bible tells me if we resist the devil, he what? He flees from all we, you know what? He hates resistance. In our city, he has had control a long time. This goes back to several civilizations, folks. Amen. This, there was ancient this is a territory for, and it started out, I'm not going to name them, but there were several tribes that lived here. And during those civilizations that were here, they worshipped ancestors, they worshipped uh, the nature of gods, uh, basically what we call Wicca or witchcraft today. Amen. Basically, they were the beginnings of it. But, but can I tell somebody here today that those spirits uh, are still in this area. They remained here. Amen. Uh, this town is steeped in those kind of things. Uh, there's a lot of witchcraft in this city. Uh, amen. There's a lot of Santeria in this city. There's a lot of things that, that we have to deal with in the spirit. Uh, amen. The first time I drove into this city, I felt it when I walked and I drove into this place. Uh, I knew we were here in the will of God, uh, but I knew we were going to come in with a fight. Amen. Uh, but can I tell you... Uh, if you'll join the fight tonight, amen. If you'll make up your mind, God has filled me with the Holy Ghost. And when He did, He gave me power over all the powers of the enemy. Hallelujah. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against Him in my life and in yours. Hallelujah. Now, I. After receiving the Holy Ghost, the apostles were used to drive out these demons. Hello. Now, it wasn't, you know, they didn't do it like, you know, Hollywood produced years ago a little film called The Exorcist, which I did not see. I would not go see. If I didn't even have the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't have went and saw that. There's something about that just wasn't right. But, you know, they call in the priest and they do all these crazy things. And then they have to fight the girl they're supposed to be exercising the spirits out of. I'm like, show me that in the scripture, please. You know why you had to fight him? Because you didn't have no power over him. That's right. Exactly. If you would have had power over him, you know what you'd done? You said, Come here, devil. <laughs> That's right. Get away from him, people. Get it out of here. Go. I remember hearing the story. I don't know who. I can't remember the preacher. I think maybe somebody associated with Brother Billy Cole. But they were in Haiti. And uh, they get a call one night. <laughs> and I mean, you're, you're, you know, it's late evening. It's not nighttime yet. I don't think it's completely dark. And so they go out to this little village. And there's a, a missionary out there. And he said, I, I need you to come and, and pray for these folks. And uh, that, you know, the, the child is is epileptic. He's got some real serious problems. And, and so they go there and, and the, the mom and dad talk to him in their native language and they're, they're talking to each other. And, and so they, they, they carry him into this house and in there's a room and uh, he notices there's a padlock on the door on the room and so they unpadlock it and they say, our son is in here. Would you mind going in and praying for him? And he said he walked in and and the room was completely dark. <laughs> when he walked in, he, he, he kind of got, got to glancing around, looking, and he could see, make out the bed, and, the, and he could make out the little guy that was over there, and he's kind of huddled down in the corner. <clears throat> and so he starts walking toward you, and about this time, the door slams shut, and he hears a pad like, click. <laughs> now he's in there with him. The next thing that happens is, this kid, who is supposed to have epilepsy, hits him head first in the chest and knocks him back on the floor and is on top of him and is uh, got his hands around his throat and is choking him down. 
and, and, and he's, he's trying to push him off, and this kid is just choking him down, and I think the kid was like 15 or 16 years old, supposedly, but anyway, this grown man can't get him off, and he realized this is not epilepsy, this is a demon, amen, and so he began to call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, oh, yeah. just, uh, first he said I couldn't really get it all the way out All I could do was kind of whisper it Because he's holding my throat And he said I whispered it between my teeth And when I did he loosened his grip a little bit And he said when he did I got a little louder Jesus And he loosened it a little more And when he did I said it again Jesus And when he said it that time Amen that demon threw that kid across the room And he went over and he laid hands on him And he rebuked that spirit And it came out Along with all the others And and in just a little bit, amen, he's knocking on the door. And he's saying, let, me, let us out of here. And so they open the door. And he comes out with their son in his right mind. That's the way it's done, church. Amen. You've got to understand, we have that kind of power and that kind of authority in the Holy Ghost. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you have that power. You have that authority. Hallelujah. Now. <clears throat> Acts chapter 5 verse 12 said about the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch and of the rest does no man join himself to them but the people magnify them and believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes both the men and women now see what happens <clears throat> they began to follow the Holy Ghost and as they're following the Holy Ghost, God is beginning to reveal himself through them. Now, the Bible said when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you receive power. The rest of that scripture said, and you shall be witnesses. Yes. Now, what are you witnesses of? You're witnesses of the power of God. You have experienced it for yourself. It has taken a life that was in sin and it has changed you. It, it has replaced all the, the horrible things in your world with a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, hear me tonight. I want somebody to understand that you have that power. Oh, we don't have it in earthen, oh, it's in earthen vessels, but, but it's not of us. It's of God. It's His power dwelling in earthen vessels. But can I tell you tonight that God's desire is that we would quit letting the witness of the demons of this world whip us up. Amen. That we would quit. Oh, come on, hear me. We're the church of the living God. Amen. All right, so when they began to follow the Holy Ghost, signs and wonders were, were, were all among them. And believers were added to the Lord, multitudes, both the men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. Look at this. And laid them on beds and couches that at the le least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Then it said, There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem bringing sick folks, look at this, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. Now, can I just say this? There is an epidemic in this day and hour of people that are vexed with unclean spirits. I've been in this all my life. I've had the Holy Ghost 50 years, folks. And in 50 years' time, amen, I have seen it go from where you might run into somebody that was a, a vexed with a spirit every now and then to a place where everybody you run into on the street, amen, just about it is vexed with spirits. The devil is at work. The Bible said that hell had enlarged herself. Amen. What she's done, she's got more, more demons on the street now than it ever has been. And because of that, 
amen, more and more people, come on, hear me now, uh, the, the psychiatrist will tell you that they're giving more of these little uh, antidepressants than they ever have been. I don't, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I read them a while back. In the 70s, there was only a small percentage of people that were getting uh, antidepressants. And now, at this point in time, it's well over half the population of the U.S. that is on antidepressants on a daily basis. You know what that tells me? That hell hath unleashed her fury upon this place. Amen. Can I tell somebody here that it's in Abilene, Texas tonight? Amen. Hell hath unleashed her fury on this city. And there are many people here, amen, that are, are, are messed up. Their minds are messed up. They're on drugs. They're on everything they can find to try to ease the pain of just living. But there's a church that has the answer in the middle of the city. Hallelujah. Hello. Amen. We know the answer. Hallelujah. Amen. That old song said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. Do you believe that? I believe that he is the answer for this city. I know that he's the answer. I know that there are people who are sitting in denominational churches in this town, I said this Sunday, who are sitting on their hands because they really feel like, I just need to raise my hands and worship God. But they can't do it for fear of being ushered out the building. But can I tell somebody here tonight, amen, that this, this church needs to be at a place where we can speak against these spirits of hell and these spirits of false religion that are binding people up and come against those things with everything we've got in the spirit world and let God do battle and when that smoke clears and it's all over with people will begin to seek the truth in this place now he said he came out from the cities around about Jerusalem. They brought the sick. And they brought those that were vexed with unclean spirits. But look what he said. And they were healed every one. Every one. Every one was healed. Acts chapter 8. You can go to verse 5. Then Peter, Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Everybody know Philip? Everybody remember this story? And he preached Christ to them. Now Jesus had said one time to his apostles, I have needs to go to Samaria. Okay. And so he sent them to Walmart. He went to Samaria. And he got there to Samaria. And uh, he went and sat on the edge of a well. And just waited. Because they knew she was coming. And this little Samaritan woman came. Yes. And uh, he asked for water. And she said, well, Sir, the well's deep and you really don't have anything to draw water with. He said, You don't understand. If you had asked me, I would give you water. But it isn't natural water. It's not the water from that well out there. It's a well of water springing up right here in the everlasting life. Hallelujah. And he began to reveal to her about her husband. That she was the guy she's living with right now, the man her husband, and the five that she had had. And she said, just a minute, I'll be right back. And she runs into town and tells everybody, you got to come see this guy. There's something different about him. And he talked to her. He said, salvation of the Jews. And, you know, he said, we were worshiping this mountain. But this salvation of the Jews. And, and what he was telling her, if you'll hang with us a little while, it's not going to be very long. I'm going to be out of here. And when I leave, I'm bringing my spirit back. Hallelujah. 
I'm coming back in spirit form. Oh, come on. He told his apostles, I'm with you, but I shall be in you. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm telling somebody here tonight that that power of God that he was talking to that little Samaritan woman about, all of a sudden now Philip's gone to Samaria. Hallelujah. To finish the job. Jesus started. Now, look what he said. And the people who want to court gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. Look at this. They listened to what he was saying because they had seen the miracle signs and wonders he did. Church, the last day's church should be the most powerful in the arms. And we're doing good to keep people filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, brother. We're doing good to get people to come to church every day of the week. Amen. Holy. Right. But we should be the most powerful thing on earth. Now, what he said. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice woo, came out of many that were possessed with them. And many that were taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Samaria. <laughs> Oh, what Jesus was telling you about has come. Hallelujah. Amen. What Jesus was, was giving you a little insight into, it's here now. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Demons are having to leave. They're having to go find somewhere else to live. They're not welcome in some area anymore. They, oh, come on, hear me. they got to go down the road to somewhere else because Jesus has sent somebody on the scene. And when Philip steps in, amen, the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God is there with him and it begin to work. Can I tell somebody tonight, the best witness you're going to have is that the Holy Ghost will work through you. Amen. Now, we cannot effectively witness to our city until the demonic powers have been brought under submission by a praying church. You hear that? You will never win Abilene. Until we have overpowered the other side that's holding folks back. Yes, sir. Especially in this day and hour. Now, you know, back years ago, you might have seen it happen, but right now, we got to fight everything with tooth and toenail. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, Ephesians 6 and 12 it says, We're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a physical confrontation, although sometimes it might turn into that. It's a spirit battle. Yes, that's why in Ephesians 6, you read the rest of the scriptures behind that, that's why he talks about Wearing the, that soldier, you're the Christian soldier. You're wearing the helmet of salvation. You're wearing the sword of the spirit. You know, you, you've got the shield of faith quenching the fiery darts of who? The wicked. Yes, Amen. You're, you're, you're in a battle, church. Right. And we so nonchalantly agree. Yes, we're in a battle. Hallelujah. Yep. Praise God. I'm battling, don't you see? Come on. You know what? The devil changes. Some of y'all fall over. Hello? Mm -hmm. Please help me, Lord. I'm just pastoring a little bit. Okay. All right. Jesus said there's a reason why we can't seem to get the upper hand on the spirit world around us. Listen to this. Matthew 17, 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son for his own. Now, you got to understand this. Let me set this stage here. He had just come off a mountain. And on that mountain were Peter, James, and John. And they weren't in the cell boat. They were up the top of the mountain with Jesus. And, and while they're up there with Jesus, what happens? All of a sudden, this transformation comes. And he begins to glow, literally glow. His clothes were glowing. And all of a sudden, there's two figures that are, are there with him conversing with Jesus. Hmm. Moses and Elijah. And they're standing here conversing with Jesus. Now, you've got to understand these three guys are wowed by this. Oh, God, 
we, we, we come and get some sticks. We got to build three tabernacles. I love God. God don't need no shrine. God don't need no shrine. Hey Amen. What he needs is somebody's heart. Hallelujah. What, what he needs is somebody totally committed. Because immediately following this incident on the mountain, this stuff I'm reading you right now happened, okay? Look what happens. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man who was down to him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's a lunatic and sore vex. And oftentimes he falls in the fire, oftentimes in the water. I brought him to the disciples, and they could not cure him. What does Jesus say? <clears throat> oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. They brought the kid over. Jesus said, in the name of he just said, go. He said, he, he, I don't know if he said it in the name of Jesus now, but he just said, go. He was Jesus. He probably had to use the name. Go. And the spirit immediately left. And so the apostles said, why couldn't we cast him out? Now there's a, there's a principle here God is teaching. All right. Jesus said, because of your unbelief, Fairly I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, and don't move them, you'll say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. How be it this kind, Lord, not out by prayer, but by prayer and fasting. And look, what he said. He tells them one thing. There's a, an important principle here. He tells them that it's because of their lack of faith. And then he turns around and says, how be it, this kind doesn't come out but by prayer and fasting. So is that a contradiction? No, that's not a contradiction. You know what that is? He, he is saying, if you're going to have that kind of faith, it's going to come through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. If you're going to have devil chasing, not moving faith, it ain't going to be coming from an easy life. It's going to come because you made up your mind. I'm going to pursue it. There's a power of God that I need on the inside of me. You know what? I'm fixing to hit the streets of Abilene. I'm going to reach some souls, but I need something going with me. I need a power that goes with me. I need a power that goes before me. So when the enemy comes, it'll be there and it'll raise up a standard against him. Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that just sat around. And every once in a while I pray. Diligently seek him. Do you know what the word diligently means in the scripture? It means to love earnestly or to choose. In other words, to have a love for spending time with God. We have many choices to, given to us. But we have to love God enough to choose to pray. We have to love God enough to choose to push the plate back for a day. Because this flesh, you know what the deal is with, with fasting? It's overcoming the flesh. Because, Brother Williams, my flesh loves to eat. Man, you know, I could almost set your clock by my, by my appetite. <laughs> well, it's about noon. How do you know? Man, I just know. You look at your clock, it'll be, off, it'll be noon or five till. Amen. Because I'm so used to it. I, I, my body is used to that little cycle that I've got in. But can I tell somebody here tonight that when you fast, amen, you break down this flesh so that God can do the work on you he needs to do to get you where you need to be spiritually so that when you go out in the community to witness, amen, that you go out with a power and with an authority in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if y'all just listen to something this up or what, but go sharp one. We have to use the power God has given us, His church, to take control of the demonic world which controls the different quadrants in the city. 
This is essential if we're ever, ever, ever going to see revival here. It's going to come after the fact, church. Now, you know what some churches are doing? They've given up the power of God. Instead, they're holding block parties down at the park. We're going to give them wingies and hamburger buns. And Sam's soda. And uh, if we can find them cheap enough, we'll give away a couple of bicycles. Maybe an iPod or two. You know, I have read the Bible through several times. And Brother Williams, I never heard Jesus once mention an iPod or a bicycle. I didn't hear him tell the apostles, y'all go gather all the stuff y'all can get from Walmart that they'll give you free. You know, they'll give the church a fifty dollar certificate. So if you go to that Walmart and get a fifty dollar certificate, on that Walmart and get a fifty dollar certificate, you can buy two or three of them iPod things. May not be brand name, but kids don't care. But it attracts the crowd. Can I tell you that God has a better plan to attract the crowd? Amen. And that's somebody that is willing to pray and to fast and to get their self to a place spiritually where God can begin to heal people. God can begin to rebuke spirits out of people. God can set people free from their own selves. Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. All right. I'm trying to close. Kind of. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. So the first part of this thing is submission. And then he said, Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Submission is another prerequisite in spiritual warfare. Unless you're truly submitted to God, you have no power or authority to resist any devil. Because your power and authority comes from him. You can't resist the devil. Oh Lord, remember the sons of Siva? Well, well, we're going to go in there and take care of these devils. You don't worry about us. We got this. We got this creature. Don't worry about it. We got it. The devil laughed. Yeah. He said, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. But who are you? <laughs> and the rest of it wasn't pretty. <laughs> they left. If they had a tail, they left with their tail tucked and their heads down and their clothes hanging in shreds on their body. Probably had a couple of black eyes and maybe a bloody nose or something because that spirit had got a hold of them and done them in. So you can't do this on your own. I can't do this on my own. I have to have his authority. Hallelujah. But I can't get his authority unless I'm submitted to him. So submission plays a big part. Come on. I know it sounds like I'm scatterbarreling tonight, but I'm telling you how to win souls. You've got to get yourself ready before you can ever win somebody out there. I'm going to show you one more principle in just a minute after I get through with this. I'm about done with these notes here. Mark 16, 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. You ever hear all these folks? I'm a believer, bless God. I asked one of them bimbos one day. I said, so you're a believer? Yes, I'm a believer. How many devils you cast out? Oh, we don't do that. How many folks you ever pray for that got healed? Oh, that just don't happen nowadays. That was from back then. Really? So are you saying the Bible's ancient and out of date? And... Really? If that's the case, then that means God's ancient and out of date. Maybe he needs to come up to nowadays and, and he needs to just pat you on your little back and just take you right on to heaven. It ain't going to happen in church. Amen. The only way it's going to happen, amen, is when you get a hold of this thing with a bulldog grip and make up your mind. I'm not going to be a wimp. I'm going to be a powerhouse in the kingdom. I received the power after the Holy Ghost came on me. Now what am I doing with it? Mm, some of us are just letting the devil whoop us. Come on. Two can tell me. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. What? To the pulling down of what? Strong. Strongholds. Hallelujah. Who pulls them down? Not me. 
They're done through God. They're done through His Spirit. His Spirit pulls them down. But you know what? He works through human means. Amen? He works through us. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you're the temple, amen, then you need to have that temple ready. Amen? Because the power of God wants to use you to pull down some strongholds. Now, here we go. He goes on and says, casting down imagination every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, the only way strongholds are going to be pulled down in this city is with a praying church and a fasting church. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. We're, we're, we're changing our method. Okay? And, and I had been thinking on this here a while back. I felt this and I didn't say nothing yet. But Brother David's cornered it the other night, yeah, last night. Amen. And uh, he told Brother Andrew, he said, quartering off the city. And, and when he said that, man, the Holy Ghost just rose up in me because that's what I had felt a while back was we need to just divide the city up into pieces. And then let's just pray and fast over one piece until we get every devil out of that, that back part of town. And we start seeing people get the Holy Ghost in that part of town. We teach Bible studies every night of the week. And, and we baptize people at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. I'll baptize them any time of the day or night. Amen. And we see them coming out of the water speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And we see their lives totally changed. And the devil's totally wrecked. Amen. I want to wreck the devil's life. I really do. All right. Now, true revival can only happen and will happen here when the church wakes up in our mind that, we, that the spiritual things in our lives are far more important than the carnal. That's why he said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, this junk is added unto you. Souls in our city depend on our walk with God and us being spiritual enough to take control of their spirits to have a grip on their lives. Now, got one more prayer. I'm going to put a preface in on this. Right before I left my office, so we'll go. Matthew 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five were wise, five were foolish. And they were foolish, took their lamps, and took all with them, took no oil with them. But the wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight a cry was made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. All those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Look at this. But the wise answer say, Not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, open to us. He answered not, and said, Verily I say unto you, or he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. You notice what the, wise, what the wise virgins did? They said, not so. We've got enough for ourselves. Praise God. We've got the Holy Ghost. It's just so good, Brother West. We can come to church. We can lift our hands. We can jump. We can shout. We can run the house. Whatever we want to do in the Holy Ghost. And there's some virgins out there who's out of oil. And we don't have enough to help them. Oh, God. Oh God, did you hear what I just said? There's some people out there that are, they're, they're needing oil. They're needing this Holy Ghost, but we don't have enough to help them. Oh, oh God. Jesus. Help us, God. Jesus. We don't have enough to help. So, so they're just going to go to hell around us. I was thinking a while back, God brought me a sober in the moment. I was riding down the road and I thought, you know, we've been here a little over 10 years. I wonder how many people have died in this city and went to hell because I never came in contact with them with the truth. It's a sobering thought. I stood by bedsides and held people's hands as they were dying. I watched them leave this Without the Holy Ghost. 
because somebody called me at the last minute and said, can you come up here or our, our loved one's dying? So we went. We stood there and watched them die. No one, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. But then it, the thought occurred to me, you never got to talk to them. You never told them about him. Oh, God. Help us, Jesus. My Lord, my Lord. Church, we got a job to do. And it's not going to start with us just going out and handing out cards. You know, we're, we're pretty happy with ourselves. Pastor buys 5,000 cards and he gives you big boxes of cards or handfuls of cards or whatever. And you go out and hand them out. That's, that's good. That's how well you give them an invitation. But you know what? There's more than it. The Bible said yes. come Compel them. Yes. Brother yes. Andrew was talking about last night about compelling people to come in here. Amen. You know, we've got to get to the place. But can I tell you this? Until we can break through the spirits that are holding them, they will not be delivered. And the only way that happens is if there's a church here when they get here that is praying and fasting and has the power of God flowing in this house every single service. When I pastored in Wells, there was nothing on a Thursday night for people to get healed of whatever. There was nothing on a Thursday night for somebody to get delivered from drugs. It happened all the time. And I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on God because the church prayed, the church fasted. It was a constant thing. Like we started here, we're fixing to go back to that. We're fixing to put the fasting and prayer chain back. Amen. But I want you to be faithful. Come on. It's just like I asked folks to read the Bible through. And I gave you a chart and said, hey, read the Bible through. And I want you to pray and keep up with it. And they just hand it in and I'll sign off on it every, every month. And there's only one person in this church that's still doing it. Everybody else just kind of. And so I wonder how many of you actually are fasting and praying on the days we ask you to fast and pray. Because you see, it's very imperative that you do that in order to provide a place when they walk in that is filled with the Spirit. I want people to walk in that door, and before they get to that back pew, I want them to feel something that runs chill bumps up and down their spine. And I'm not talking about the air conditioner. I'm talking about I want the power of God to be so strong in this house that when they walk through the back door, oh, can I tell you... My wife and I, several years back, we were we were over a youth group in, in Lufkin, Texas, and, and one afternoon, one Sunday afternoon, we broke out into a prayer meeting with these kids, and, and, and they started praying, and they got in the Spirit, were praying in the Spirit, some of them had never spoken tongues in their life, and they're, now they're praying in the Spirit for three solid hours they were praying. And can I tell you what happened? The, the youth leader came in and she walked into that room and she looked at me and she said, when I got out of the car on the parking lot before I even heard them, I could feel the power of God surging through that place. Can I tell somebody here tonight that's what this preacher wants to see happen in this place. Hey, come on, God did not send me here to just lead four or five or twenty people. Hey Amen. And just kind of you know, be nonchalant about it. We've got to get real, church. We've got to get serious enough that we're willing to say, God, whatever sacrifice I need to make, I want your power flowing through me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Driscoll, you'll take them kids to the back. I want Andrew to come up and tell her. I didn't even know this. And God started giving